Keep that in mind. Reminding you that for a reason. Keep that in mind. Profits, Profits from, from slaves. slaves. Australia, Australia has, has unfinished, unfinished business in repaying wages to Aboriginal and South Sea Islander slaves. slaves. First Nations slave work allowed big businesses to reap substantial profits and help maintain the Australian economy through the Great Depression. From scratch. Aboriginal people are proud of their work on stations even though the historical narrative is enshrined in silence and denial. As Boon woman Valerie Linnau has said of her experiences of slavery in the 1950s, what if your wages got stolen? Honestly, wouldn't you like to have your wages back? Honestly, I think it should be owed to the ones who were slave labor. We got up and worked from dawn to dusk. We lost everything. Family. Everything. Everything. You, you cannot, cannot go stealing our lousy little sixpence. We, we have, have got, got to, to have money. money. We, we have got, got to have money back. back. You, you have, have got, got to give something back after all this country did to the Aboriginal people. people. You, you cannot, cannot keep stealing off us. From, from scratch. scratch. The reason, the reason why I say this is I want you all to understand white supremacy its root is, is economic and its methods are deception because it is constantly at war with you and everyone around you. And everything is about either quickly or slowly wearing you down until one day you look up and, quite possibly by your own actions, you have either been forced to put them in front of you, you've either been forced to do it, or you've chosen to do it. You've been conditioned to think this is okay and this is all right. And then when someone says something about it, why they're going to tell you that, well, this, we built this on our own. And this is all just great by itself. And even if you stand up, these other folks will be like, oh, well, don't worry, you're our buddies. Because that's what these comments are meant to say here is that why you are honorary, White, white people. You, you guys, guys are honorary white, white people. people. Even though we never did to you, we did to black, black folk. Well, no, don't. You're, you're honorary, honorary white, white people. So you've been, been recruited into, into that, that, at least socially, you're, you're supposed, supposed to be. Because we need you as backup. backup. We need you as backup, backup against, against the Negroes. Negroes. So, so you see, at the end of the day, we, we all need to stick, stick together, together as white, white people. As white and Asian people. As descendants from the Caucasus Mountains. As lighter skinned people. We need to stick together. So if there is any sort of disagreement or whatever, don't worry. We're perfectly fine nipping that in the bud. We certainly would not want to express any hostility towards our Asian partners. Because at the end of the day, white supremacy is about denying that it was ever supreme in anything. And you're going to need plenty of help if you're, you're going to keep this con, con job going. going. You're, you're going to need, need a lot of help. And what they have found, sad to say, but what they have found is a very willing Asian population. They have found an Asian population that a large majority of is quite willing and eager to, to go, go along with, with the program. The, the only, whenever the, the conversation, conversation turns to white and Asian, they're conciliatory, but when the conversation turns to us, all of a sudden things get real hostile. But only when it turns to us, either in America or around the world. That to the point that they cannot simply have a conversation about themselves 
without making, making it about, about us, us, which tells, tells you that their conversations, conversations are code for, yeah, yeah and what we gonna do about them Negroes? And what we gonna do about them? And what we gonna do about them? Well, what, what does this have, have to do with the Mr. Japan, Japan contest? What, what it has, has to do with the Mr. Japan, Japan contest is it means something different that when they, they when they, they had an opportunity to choose who is going to be the epitome or example of Japanese beauty and culture, you had no problem choosing a white woman and, and putting, putting her up front right alongside your own daughters. You have, you have taken, taken a, a white, white woman, woman and placed, placed her right alongside your own daughters. And you have told your daughters that this is your ideal of Japanese beauty. You know, the folks who drop the bombs. You know, them. And that, that it's all right, and you shouldn't feel any kind of way, and why they're not white, they're Japanese. Well, that's, well, that's very interesting, that, 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 that little bit of a, that little bit of a, you know, rationale right there. Why she's not white, she's Japanese. Interesting, because over here they're saying, yeah, they're not Asian, they're white. Did you get that? Yeah. Over, over here, here well, they're, they're not, not Asians, but they're, they're white. And, and over here, here well, she's, she's not white, white. She's, she's Asian. Asian. What, what I'm, I'm saying, saying here is that, did you notice, notice there's, there's not a Donnybrook breaking out. There's, there's a whole bunch of folks sitting up here fighting thing. thing. Well, well done, done Asians. Asian. There's, there's a, a big, big fight going on here. They're not having a damn drag out about that. That's, That's not, not going, going on. on. Not, not at all. all. Not, not at all. all. And they're, they're doing, doing that for a reason. Because, because this is to reinforce, reinforce the, the culture. White society knows that they are the dominant culture in Asia. White society knows that they are the dominant culture. They also understand that you can't be too blatant with it. Folks, stop me if any of this sounds familiar. Stop me if any of this is the pathology that I've been teaching you about now for going on decades. You cannot run around with a big banner Flaunting your whiteness, as a matter of fact, you need to make it illegal and verboten for anyone to use that word. Now, we can use the word Japanese, we can use the word black, we can use the word Asian, you can use any word for anybody else's race. Stop using that word for white. Ain't no white. There is no white. Stop anybody who tries to do it. Condemn them, shame them, silence them, erase them. Don't say anything about white. Let them just be white people. Move among you, get, get their preferential, preferential treatment, treatment, but you are forbidden to say that word. word. And, and when we go through American society, they talk about America and American culture. And Dr. John Henry Clark, the luminary, we talked about that for decades here. Then when you say those words, it doesn't mean the same thing. It doesn't mean the same thing. I'm, I'm from, from Louisiana, Louisiana, but when I say I'm a Southerner, it doesn't mean the same thing as when Brooks and Dunn and Randy Travis or uh, Governor Greg Abbott show up. It don't mean the same thing. When they say that they are Southerners, it means something different than when I say that I am a Southerner. 
And when you ask about what the difference is, the first order of business is, by the way, don't bring up that white thing. That white thing is irrelevant. Matter of fact, we don't even call ourselves white. Why show us a single rule of law where we call ourselves white people? We got into that decades and centuries ago. We don't call ourselves white. Nobody should do that right there. We don't identify ourselves that way. So, so you, you see, see, you end, end up, up swinging in a phantom, phantom because, because you can see that they are giving themselves white privilege. It is obvious to the eyeball that there is white privilege, but you're, there is, it's hard to, when you want to write legislation against it or craft a policy against it, they tell you, well, I mean, there's, no, there's no, nothing white in the policy currently that does anything like that. So you're up against white privilege results. And because they are enshrined in their practices, and they're telling you, okay, well, you can remove it if you can identify where, where we legislated. Which, of course, we haven't legislated. This is cultural. This is colonization. This is not legislation. To undo it, we would have to attack it culturally. When you have something like this, when you're sitting in the middle of Japan, at least with, with the, the biracial, biracial Japanese, Japanese girls, at least, least they could claim some tie to the land. They could claim some tie to the people. They could claim some tie to the bloodline. That they are the modern day reproduction of the people who created Japan. At least they can say that. This, this woman, woman here, here is an immigrant. With neither tied to the bloodline nor the history. And yet you're being told, well, don't, don't worry, she's as good as they are. And, and then you have a bunch of folks backing it up. Then you have a bunch of folks backing it up. And as I said, when I talked to Jerry Taylor, I couldn't help but notice while you all certainly do try to give the impression that you're perfectly fine with Asian people, I just couldn't help but notice that Asians constitute, in some cases, a third or 40% of your workforce at your Silicon Valley corporations, and yet they are curiously absent from the upper management and executives across the board. Not just, just in one, one or two, two places, places, across the board, they disappear. Kind of like black folks at Walmart. Why, they're the majority, majority of the workforce when you walk in the door, and yet, yet if you just take, take a step, step, one step up into middle, middle management or the executives, black people disappear. Now, now, these would be, be questions for Japanese, Japanese people to confront and, and for Japanese, Japanese people to deal with. And there are going to be, I suspect, some ugly revelations that will have to be dealt with here. I suspect there will be some ugly revelations they may have to deal with here, and they might have to confront the idea, by the way, has your mind been colonized? This could be kind of ugly, but they're going to probably have to ask themselves, has your mind been colonized? Are we a culturally colonized people? And if we are, well, what do we do about it? Because right now, the only thing that you're really useful for is attacking black people, which they have merrily done. But while you're sitting there saying, okay, we're going to work with the white folk to attack black people, by the way, you do understand, well, there's no retirement plan in this for you. There is no exit strategy in this for you. You are a tool, and we all know what white supremacy does when it is done with its tools. It doesn't clean them off and put them back in the case. When it's ultimately done with it, it breaks it to pieces. And now, as I've told you all, going into the 21st century, they've dropped the polite tones. It's like, you know what, let's just get it down to the business. We run, we run this thing. thing. We've, We've been very, very subtle, subtle about it before with your manga and your anime. Your manga and your anime, your your anime, anime have softened you up. up. 
over the course of the last 50 years. Manga and anime has softened up the people and softened you up for the final incursion. Which is where now we move into positions of power and authority. Culturally. They've already got you militarily dominant. Now we're going to move into powers of into positions of authority culturally. That it will now be us who define your culture. Folks, does this sound familiar? 50 years of hip hop, anyone? When they started going on that campaign about that, when they started going on that crusade for that, do you remember who they started sending out? Do you remember what they started saying when they started doing that? Did they bring us or did they grab everyone who didn't look like us? And say that, by the way, we're here to tell you what your culture is. Understand something, that's the whole point right there, because for us, Rap and hip hop is not simply a music form. It is an expression of us as a people. It is a language of us as a people. It's an understanding of us as a people. It is a communication apparatus of genetic ancestry. It is an apparatus of communicating industriousness. We changed whole parts of the society as a result of it. It's, it's like, like nothing, nothing you've ever seen, seen before. So it's like, like yeah, you, you gotta, gotta take, take that, that down. down. You, you gotta knock that down. You can't leave that standing. So, so I'm just showing you here that, by the way, I'm doing, doing my job as the black media here, showing you all the lines of connection between these methods of colonization. You've seen it before. When they want to take over a culture, they eventually smuggle in a white person. They, that's eventually always the end game. The end game is always smuggled in a white person. It's always been that. In reality, that's what the minstrel shows were. And then when you get to music, first order of business. Hey, uh, there ain't no Chuck Berry. Come here, Elvis Presley. First, Jerry Lee Lewis. By the way, oh, I'm going to say it. it. I just couldn't help but notice a line of similarity there. Jason, are you going to say it? Oh, I'm going to do it. Jerry Lewis. Didn't people say that he was running around with underage girls? What? I mean, yeah, they were, they were, they were underage at that time. It was a scandal. Oh, yeah, his cousin. And didn't Elvis Presley end up pursuing a underage girl? Oh, I'm, 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 maybe I'm mistaken about that. Maybe I'm just remembering it all wrong. Let me tell y'all, it wasn't like, oh, the standards of today. These were scandals back then. People, People were, were asking, asking questions, questions and saying, whoa, whoa back, back then, then, folks. It's not, it's not like I'm just saying, saying this. well, Jason, this was 40, 50 years ago. Um, excuse me, these were scandals back then. then. No, no, nobody thought, thought that was cool back then. then. These, these were scandals, scandals back, back then. then. And, and that was the guy that they chose to sit up here and co-opt our music. Jerry Lewis and Elvis Aaron Presley, and they were far from the only ones, but those are the two biggest ones. That's why I admonish people here, and I have made a lot of folks uncomfortable with this, but I want you to understand what we're dealing with. Is this, this is no time, time to sit up here and decide, well, we're going to be diplomatic and academic about it. This is no time for that. We don't, we don't have, have that luxury when someone is utilizing a methodology of warfare. You, you don't, don't sit there and condone that. 
You don't, you don't let, let this break, break down, down into, into some, some academic, academic exercise. This, this is, is cultural war we're talking, talking about. This, this is about, about leaving us with absolutely nothing. nothing. This, this is about silencing our boys. This, this is about taking what we've done and built, saying, saying no, you, you have never done and built anything. anything. When they, they install a white person, person that's the first step to erasing us all together from it and saying, no, you don't have a cultural legacy. And when you don't have a cultural legacy, the next question becomes, okay, what have you built? Oh, you haven't built anything, see? You don't have a cultural legacy. Well, we did, I didn't teach us we didn't. No, no go, go back, back even, even further, further than, than that. that. These are some uncomfortable things here, here people, but, but we, we have to understand what that is. I am a musician. I play several, several instruments. instruments. I have great respect, respect for anyone who has gone through the crucible of learning how to play an instrument. instrument. It's not, not something that you do quickly nor easily. And, and to become, become proficient at it, we are, we are part of an elite, elite alumni. alumni. For, For those, those of us who have actually learned how to play instruments, with all of that having been stated, to be, to be very, very, very clear, whether it is Michael McDonald, or I'm going to say names, whether it is Michael McDonald, whether it's the Bee Gees, whether it's Hall Notes and so called. Blue-eyed Blue soul thing? Okay, I respect them as musicians. I respect them as songwriters. I certainly do. But when someone attempts to take their music and then starts encroaching over into our territory, now this is representative of what we've done. I see what you're doing there. And that's your first step to removing us from it. Well, Jason, Jason, what, what do, do you, you mean? mean? Folks, our, our culture isn't a bumper sticker. sticker. Nor is it an empty slogan. slogan. It, it is our experience. It's our blood. blood. You, you see, see where, where the music is turned to trash is when you remove the, the message from it. The message is the heart and the soul of it. it. It's, 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 it's very purpose and reason for existing. It's, it's the, the reason that revolutions can begin. We, throughout time in memoriam, we have kicked off our resistance movements with what these other folks consider to be songs. These other folks consider them to be songs, and yet these have been the methods that we use to kick off our resistance movements from the days of chattel slavery forward. That has always been the method that we used. These, These other folks hear song and dance. We hear revolution. See how that sounds familiar? When you say Southerner, it doesn't mean the same thing to you that it means to them. And when we start singing, it doesn't mean the same thing to them that it means to us. You see, that is us. Speaking in code and being on code. That's why they wish to infiltrate it and take it over because we do have a code. And that is one of the strongest forms and versions of it. So when you bring these other people in, all of a sudden you're taking a lot of our mores. Look it up. And, and you're, you're taking, taking a lot of our methodologies and a lot of the techniques that we use. And now it's going in another direction. Or you are attempting to supplant individuals who do not represent our experience. Marshall Mathers might have been a poor kid raised in the outskirts of Detroit. He may have been. His mama might have gone through some things. Maybe so. I'm not here to speak on that. What I am here to say is that his experience does not represent us as a people. And I become concerned when you put somebody in front like that because that means they represent our experience. 
Well, well no, no, I don't, I don't represent, represent your experience. It's just I love, I love the music, music, but here's the problem. problem. You're, You're attempting, attempting to separate the music from the people. This, this is not music. This is our cultural legacy. legacy. And, and you are attempting to tell us it can become commercialized, which means co-opted and owned by somebody else, and now it's been destroyed. No, we cannot allow that because if you destroy the music, you destroy the revolution. If you, if you have, have destroyed, destroyed the music, you have destroyed, destroyed the revolution. And Marshall Mathers ain't gonna lead the revolution. Tina Marie ain't gonna lead the revolution. Hall and Oates ain't gonna lead the revolution. Kenny G and John B and Justin Timberlake ain't gonna lead the revolution. It is very nice to have their, for lack of a better term, support, to have their moral support perfectly fine. But what we cannot have is a situation where our power is handed over to other people. You and I are not allowed to lead the Irish movement or the Irish parade. We're not allowed to do that. We, we can, can certainly support, support them, them, but how, how do we lead them? them? And, and again, I say, I do not denigrate them as musicians, nor do I denigrate them as people. I am saying that I am not going to have anyone represent our cultural movement and our cultural heritage except the people of the culture. Marshall Mathers, now let me explain to you what the problem here is, and this actually touches on in Japan and other places here. Marshall Mathers cannot tell you about his, the root of these things is our resistance to systemic, to systemic racism. Marshall Mathers cannot tell you about his resistance to systemic racism. He cannot tell you how his family has suffered under it. He cannot he tell you about the pains and suffering that his fathers and grandfathers, mothers and grandmothers, the stories they had to tell about having dogs sick on them, of sitting being segregated, being red redlined, of having their rights threatened, of being taken to jail and not coming out. They can't say anything about that. The hardships they've experienced have been self-inflicted. They are not victims of systemic racism. They are not victims of institutional racism, and they have not had to come up with this ingenious method of combating it. In other words, what I'm saying is it serves D, it's academic, it doesn't go to the DNA, it doesn't go to the bone. It does not, because it cannot. His mother didn't sit around telling him stories about how she was uh, being oppressed and how she was being discriminated against for being black. She can tell you about her issues of being a white woman. She cannot say a thing about being black. You'll never know that. You can never know it. What, what you are doing is cosplaying what you've seen, seen us do because we turned it successful because it, it was not your experience. The appeal of rap music to white kids is specifically because it is not their experience. Just like in Japanese culture, seeing the katana blades and the ninja outfits and the um, samurai armor, well, that's completely foreign to Europeans. Europeans, Europeans had, had swords, swords, not, not like, like Japanese, Japanese did. And they, they had, had armor, armor, but not, not like, like Japanese, Japanese did. did. Well, this, well, this is, is totally foreign to them. them. And, and that's, that's why it's appealing. appealing. Like, oh, oh wow, wow, this is interesting. interesting. But, but you, you will, will never be the samurai, samurai and, and you'll, you'll never, never be the ninjas, ninjas because, because you, you cannot, cannot be. And, and that's perfectly fine. You can respect that. But inevitably, if you put other people in charge of your culture, you're going to lose it because by definition, you must lose it. Because it doesn't have any deep roots is the problem. What? Folks, culture requires roots. And the deeper the roots, the stronger the culture. 
How deep do this, this, this Ukrainian woman's roots run in Japan? This is why we say coming from the soil. How deep are your roots in the soil? Or is this just another stop on your way passing through? You see, what bonds us together as a people is our ability to discuss our common experiences. Not we heard from somebody else. I got stories about white supremacists. You got stories about white supremacists. I've got stories about entrepreneurial people. You got stories about entrepreneurial people. I've got stories about my family overcoming these things. You got stories, hopefully, in your family overcoming these things. You got stories about folks being moved around. We have commonality of experiences that don't just go back decades but go back centuries Marshall Mathers doesn't Hollow don't Kenny G doesn't Tina Marie don't the Bee Gees don't Michael McDonald don't Justin Timberlake doesn't I can go down the list that's the difference it's, it's not, not about, about can you string, string together the words like us and Marshall Mathers can't do it either. It's not about whether or not you could. could. Your roots, roots do not, you don't have, have our roots, and they, they certainly don't go deep. deep. You, you are, are an observer. observer. And when, when, if, when, when I start, start seeing people start, start to position and maneuver, maneuver you into a situation where you will become our spokesperson or you will become a, a person who dictates where the culture, the culture goes, goes, no, that will never happen. It can never, never happen. And, and if, if you truly respect the, the culture, culture, then you must respect the pecking order. order. Let, Let me, me say, say that, that again. again. If, if you, you claim, claim that you truly respect the culture, then you, you are not going, going to attempt to come in and gentrify the culture. culture. You, you will respect the culture, and you will respect the pecking order, because what, what you liked about when you came here were the, the black people and what they had created from their experience. That was what you liked about it. That was what you loved about it. That was what you were ingratiated with. The only thing that you could do with your readiness to attempt to put your hands all over it is change it from whatever it was that you liked so much when you came here. That's the problem. If we allow you to succeed, it will transform into something that is not what you even came here for. So, so even if you had the best of intentions, let's just assume that your intentions are completely pure, for lack of a better term. Even if they were, if we allow that, you, we will end up with something totally different. It will lose its essence and its reason for being. It will become just another thing. And, and what, what you, you love, love about what we built is it is unique. It is unique and powerful because it is not just another thing. thing. It's, it's special. And if you wish to preserve it, it needs to be left alone. It is special. That does not mean that you cannot contribute. Of course you can. But you cannot control. And, and the, the people, people who sent you didn't send you here because they were hoping you could contribute. They, they sent you here because they were expecting you to end up controlling it, which, which is what they've they done, done over and over and over, and over again. again. No, no, not, not just, just the blues or jazz, jazz or country music or rock music. music. I'm, I'm talking about, about the hair care, care industry. industry. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about the movie industry. industry. I'm, I'm talking about from a cultural standpoint. You see, even, even if you make movies, the, the movies that, that you make are supposed to have your cultural footprints, footprints uh, fingerprints, fingerprints on it. it. It's not it's supposed to be some, some frail, futile, phony imitation of something, something else. You're supposed, supposed to build something that's yours. yours. 
Case, Case in point, point, when you, you take a look at Hong Kong, Kong cinema, cinema, Hong Kong cinema is, is not some shoddy reproduction of, of European cinema. cinema. George, George Lucas specifically mentions Akira Kurosawa, look him up, as one of his direct influences for Star Wars. But, but then again, again, there are a number of white directors, directors who specifically cite Kurosawa and others, others, by the way. Kurosawa is probably, probably the most well-known, but there are actually many others. They cite those men. People from Japanese and Hong Kong cinema. But these men did not attempt to Americanize their work. It, it was purely Japanese, Japanese purely Chinese. Chinese. And, and if, if you wanted to deal with it, you were going to have to deal with it on their terms. terms. They didn't it sit up here and, 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 and try to Americanize it. It had some things that you recognize, but the culture and the feeling and the environment of it was straight raw. Of course, there are common human elements that you can identify with, otherwise it would just all be irrelevant to you. But, but what, what they, they didn't try to do was become some, some frail, pale, futile, sloppy, shiny imitation of the white films. And, and in the process, they created something new and unique that white men said, wow, we started this, but you guys have taken it to, you've done something unique and new with it. Something we never could have done. Well, well guess, guess what? what? We've, we've done, done the same, same thing, only we've, we've done, done it 10, 10 12, 30, 30 times over, over now. All over the place. So imagine if you had looked at Japanese cinema or Hong Kong cinema and they brought over a bunch of white directors or just one white director and he became the it guy in Japanese cinema or the it guy in a Hong Kong cinema. You wouldn't have what you have today because by definition, you couldn't have what you have today. What I submit to you all is that the whole point of joining this coalition here is that this is going to give cultural backup and that when it does bolster the ranks and what you will see is that when they get done, they're going to turn around and say, by the way, us white Asians, Asians since we are now so much closer together culturally, we all know the bedrock is, by the way, we can all agree we don't like the niggers, right? See, that's the part where it, where it makes that turn. Yes, we know about some of Marshall Mathers' race music before. But, but my, my point, point is, can you see a time where you have music that you created that is in fact attacking you? A uh, music in our form, form that we have created, created that you give it up with other people, the next thing you know, they'll, they'll be using it to attack you with it. it. Try that in a small town is humorous, but, but only because, because it's not from our culture. culture. But, but imagine... A white, white hip hop, hop artist who's going to get a bunch of promotion and making music questioning the need for reparations. Hell, questioning whether racism exists. Why we're all one people. All lives matter. Imagine that. And then, then you're going to find, find that there will be fertile, fertile soil because, as we've known and experienced here, we can go, go down, down the list of Asian artists who are lockstep with, with them. They're, they're not militant about, about keeping the white, white folks out, but they are militant about attacking us. So, so say, say hello, hello to Mr. Japan. Japan. Japan is actually less shocked by this than you might, you might think. think. And now that this has occurred, occurred, now that she is going to be the bellwether and the leader of Japanese female society, I just wonder 
is she, she going, going to lead them, them to be a more Japanese, Japanese nation? Or is she going to lead them to become and to encourage them to become a more white nation? Because we all know that when that turn happens, it won't be long before people start looking at us. However, you might disagree. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. And, and the number is 646 That's 646 Your personal access code to the Black Radio Program on Earth, the only one of its kind. You're certainly welcome to join us. I want to thank everyone who's contributed to this program on PayPal, Venmo. Thank you very much here to Gerald, Darlene, Walter, and Amy, and everyone else here who's contributed. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. These are the conversations you do not hear and will not hear anywhere else. Don't expect, expect Bowling Ball, Ball Martin, Martin, The Root, or any of these other folks. folks. They're not, not going to have this conversation here where you put this in its proper context. context. There are a number, a number of black, black folk here, by the way, some of you who live in Japan or live in Asia or whatever here, here and, and you cannot allow yourselves to become confused. confused. Some of you have. Some of you have become confused. Hopefully, Hopefully you'll have an opportunity to get yourself straightened out. out. Let me get to the phone lines over here. Let's get a caller from area code 279. You're on live, Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, you look out of San Bernardino. Okay. Who out of San Bernardino? T. Okay, T. Hall out of San Bernardino. What's on your mind? Man, uh, I had, uh, first I got a couple of questions for you, but um, I called in uh, last time. And it was a bit of a communication issue. I don't know. You were trying to set me off, and I could not hear you. So I was wondering what's going on with that. Because um, you were, uh, yesterday you were talking to uh, a lady in New York. Okay, well, it's battle, time is in the essence here. So are you hearing us tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, okay. okay. It's fine here, so what's your question? question? All right. Uh, love your podcast. Uh, don't want to get that wrong. Um, man, I can't help but just say, man, preparations across the board. Man, this is, uh, you know, I think about Africa and I think about the turmoil that's happening in that place and the constant sabotage and the interference of these people to where we can, and, I mean, we're being scattered. Um, and we have an over infestation of of black people who are on the sellout side. They're selling us out. And whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, uh, these people uh, smile right in our face and call themselves black. They may, you know, I mean, just look at the Democrats. They're 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 calling out white supremacy, and they're and they have white males as their sexual partners. And they're, and they're saying, saying white supremacy. supremacy. Like, like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? I mean, how are we are not awake to what is going on? I mean, we, we are literally the island of... Uh, well, I think people do see it. I mean, people, well, I people I already see, see it. There's, 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 there's nobody who doesn't see it. There's nobody who doesn't acknowledge it or doesn't recognize it there. I think everybody does see it. The question is always not, do you see it? The question is, do you accept it? Because, because people who accept, accept have colonized minds. Got a lot of background noise there, but thank you very much for this call tonight. Let me get a caller from country code 819. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hello, this is Eric Black calling in from Tokyo. What's going on? All right, Eric Black from Tokyo. What's on your mind? Yeah, man, I'm told to call in. I'm calling. I'm telling you right now, man. It's like, you know, I've been day one, B1 from day one. I've been in here. I've been in Japan for like more than 15 years and everything, and I have to tell you, TDA, you're wrong on this one. Okay. Um, time is of the essence here. What, what are we wrong about, sir? Let's keep it moving. Well, the entire situation about Miss, about, uh, Miss Japan and everything, the Japanese, they're pissed. They're not happy with this at all. And the one thing we also have to realize is that the Miss Universe Corporation, that's American-owned. 
so what you have right, right now is you have a white, white corporate enclave and everything that's saying, okay, okay well, we, we, we need you guys to fight Taiwan and you, we, we know you're helping us finance Ukraine and everything. So guess what? We've got to put this out and everything because you guys are breaking back. The Japanese don't want to be white. Now, now, when, when you, you talk, talk about, about the Koreans, Koreans, the Chinese, Chinese the, and, well, the Singaporeans and everything, straight up 100% anti-black bootleggers. That, that, that is what it is. is. They, they are what they are. are. You know what I mean? I don't even... I know who they are. I know how they act. I know what. I know that they talk about it. When it comes to the Japanese, they're not anti-black at all. They want to put that image out for a whole bunch of brothers don't come here and everything like that. They don't want to get hip-hop in that, but... No, no, you're wrong, wrong on that. Okay. Now, if, we're if the about Japanese, Asians, okay, okay now, if the Japanese, Japanese we're, we're not going to talk about Asian in general. general. If, if the, the Japanese, Japanese no, go ahead. Okay, if the Japanese are not anti black, sir, then why is it that that term mm-hmm. gaijin is pointed mm-hmm. specifically at us so often? Well, gaijin itself and everything, that means faith alien. It's not at us, it's at all foreigners. Okay, well, gaijin means, yes, gaijin does, gaijin does mean foreigner. Yes, yes, but you notice know I made a distinction there, there. so I, I know what the word translates, translates to, it means, but I said what I said for a reason. Space, no, actually, it, trans- it, it, it translates to space aliens, like, like not even human, human. Because, because when Admiral, Admiral Perry and all, and all these other Europeans European started coming, coming off to Japan, Japan they, they looked to the Japanese, they looked like space aliens, like, who's this white motherfucker? Okay, sir, are you, okay, sir, um... That, that, that term, term long, long predates, predates Captain Perry. Perry. Long predates him. That no, wasn't yeah, a term that just sprung into that, that, that wasn't a term that sprung into existence with him. him. That, that that term is very old. old. So I said, no, it's, 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 it's I said, the context, I said, sir. Oh, call oh, yourself. You're, you're getting very emotional, emotional and getting this emotional behind Japanese people. That's that's not a that's not a good sign. So, so you, you might want to re-examine, re-examine your, you might want to re-examine your cultural point of origin because you're not getting that you're emotional not gonna about this. So that's, that's not that's, that's not, not good, you're not gonna sir. I'm repeating, I'm repeating your I'm repeating your words. I'm repeating your words. If that paints you a certain way, you might want to examine yourself here. You're getting very emotional, sir. I'm not going to let you take over my program, sir. You're getting very emotional about Japan. And what I'm, I'm saying, saying is, I don't know what they've, they've done, done for you. No, this made you this hard body for them. But, but this, this is a real, real bad look to be this emotionally triggered for them. It's, not, it's, it's a, a bad, bad look. look. You are not trying to go there. You are not trying to go there. Okay, finish the talk. Sir, I asked, I said, I already said there, that term goes way before Captain Perry, so we can't use that. However, However, it's, it's modern, modern usage and I just, where we're, we're concerned. concerned. Number, Number one, that shouldn't even be something that comes up with us when we actually take a look at indigenous people that really shouldn't even come up, and yet there's, there's a particular disdain where we are concerned. concerned. Because, because someone, someone listening to you would think that Japanese people have no problem with interracial relationships, relationships specifically where we're concerned. concerned. You're, right, you're right, they don't. Hang up the phone. What? what? Sir, Sir get, get off, off the phone. phone. We're, we're not, not even going to do this. We're not even going to do this. Hang up the phone. We're, we're just, just not going to do this. We are, we are folks, not going to do this. We're not even going to begin, begin that. We're, we're just, just not, not going to do it. it. So, you got to understand, understand some, some folks spend so much time in these environments that they become... Assimilated. Some folks, you, you spend so much time with these people that you just become assimilated. And then you just say things that, by the way, we all sitting over here talking about our interactions with these people. And you, nope, ain't no racism, ain't no racism. Next stop, ain't no white supremacy. There's the next one there. Ain't, ain't no, no racism, racism, ain't no white supremacy, ain't no ain't that going on with you, Jiggy, ain't like, nope, hey, 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 we're fine, okay, we're, we're done. done, we're done, we're done. done. If once, once you say, say that, there's literally, literally nothing, nothing else, else to say here, once, once you, you said that, that. We're, we're done. done. 
because now, now what you're going to tell, tell us is that every example that we use, well, that's, that's just them. them. That's, that's just, just those folks. folks. That's, that's just them, them over there. there. That's, that's, that, that's, that's where we're going to go, go next. With it. Well, I'm, I'm, now, now we're going to give you an example. Just people over there. Yes. I just, I just want, want you to understand, yeah, we're not going to waste time with that. You all know what you see, you know what you've experienced. And when a person just sits up here and starts denying, it's like, okay, Nick, stop, Clarence Thomas. Nick, Nick, stop, there's that. that. Call him Harry Coast 757, you're on live with Black Channel. Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Tanya from Virginia Beach. Tanya from Virginia Beach. Um, what's on your mind? In regards to culture and observations, the Olympics have started their advertising campaign, and the two people for the first time in breakdancing, the United States is sending Jeffrey Lewis, He's black, he's from Houston. And the second one is Sunny Choi. She's Japanese. Sounds about right. I mean, sounds about white, but yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you very much for this call tonight. Folks, Professor Black Truth did his video about Asian racism going on over a decade ago. From, From their, their television, television commercials, commercials blackface, blackface has always, always blackface has, has always been something funny, funny to them. them. Mocking us in, in their, their anime, anime, depicting, depicting us with, 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 you know, with, with, with the Al Jolson minstrel face. Yes, yes I'll, I'll even go, go there, there with, with Akira. Akira. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about the, the, the Japanese, Japanese manga anime, Akira. Akira. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I read that, that when I was, was a kid. kid. Uh, the, the Clown, Clown Gang. Gang. Now, now Akira, Akira is one of the most famous, well-known, historic manga anime in history. And yet, who was the leader of the Clown Gang and what did he look like? Yeah, there's only one black person portrayed in Akira. He's a member of a criminal gang called the Clowns. Only his clown face looks exactly like Al Jolson's minstrel show. But ain't no anti-black racism in Japan. Ain't none. No, they're not anti-black. No, Jason, you didn't really see that. Then I'm not going to have somebody sit up here and tell me that that was somehow just some, oh, you just don't understand. There's a misunderstanding. You're going to sit there and see a minstrel face woman. Well, I mean, really like that right there. I mean, see, they just got a, they just got a kind of skewed sense of humor, Jason. If you, Jason, if you spend enough time with them, you mean if I get integrated like you? You mean if I spend enough time and get assimilated like you? I'll see things differently if I just tolerate their abuse and their insults long enough. Then eventually I'll get used to it and I'll just understand it. Oh, that's just the way it is, The way they do things is pretty damn racist. We can go down the list. They have a long history of portraying us that way in their media. A long, a long history, history of that blatant disrespect towards, towards a people who they didn't even have any contact with. with. They, they didn't project their venom towards the people who dropped the bombs on them. Now, they, they didn't do that. Why, they lionized them. They idolized them. They directed their venom at us. Some, Some people they, they never met, met don't, don't have any interaction with. You like the damn country. country. We don't have any interaction with you. Except, Except genetically, genetically, to be totally honest with you, they, they deny that. Okay, fine. Uh, we don't have any interaction with you. We've never done anything to you. Those, Those folks drop bombs on you. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're saving your, your venom and your cultural animosity for us. You're not, not portraying, you're, you're not using your anime and your manga to portray all white people as demons and monsters with bangs. No, you use it to mock us. But, but that's, that's not anti have been doing it for decades, but that's, that's not anti black That's, that's not, not anti black so The next step that we're doing, if I can just explain to you, you just don't get it. Yeah, I do get it. Yeah, I do. I do. 
You know, you know what, what here? Um, Arius, why don't you, why don't you go, ahead go ahead and give, and give us a call, call back, back in. in. He, he can, can explain, explain to us why it is that the minstrel cartoons, that I, I'm, I'm sitting, sitting here naming them, he, he can explain, explain to all of us why that's not anti-black. anti-black. So, so Arius, Arius, you know what? what? Why don't, why don't you, you go, go ahead and give, give us a call back, back in here and help us all to understand why that was why that is not anti-black behavior. That this is stuff they've been doing for decades. Hell, they still do it. That they've been doing this for decades and that we just don't understand that that's not anti-black. All in their TV, all in their movies, all in their commercials, and that we just we just don't see the right side. So, so why don't, don't you give us a call back? back. I'll, I'll bump you to the front of the line, line, and you can explain to everybody why it is that that's not anti-black, and that we all just get it wrong. Call Eric three two three. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, good evening, Big Brother Jason. It's Brother Elijah calling out of Eaton Arrow. Okay, Brother Elijah, did you call last night? No, I didn't, brother. Mm-hmm. I only called the um, business yesterday. I didn't call um, okay. last night. Oh, um, no, actually, no, you are correct. Actually, actually, you did, did but just not here. Okay, okay, go ahead. All right, what's on your mind, brother? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, brother, um, pardon me for this. I'm going to make a statement, and then I'm going to ask you a question after. But I don't know what that clown was talking about who called it. But you'll give him further time to explain. When I was in the Marine Corps, I was... um. <laughs> Deployed, deployed to Japan, Japan with my unit back in um, September 2012, and I was stationed there for six months. And I want to add to what you said. This is just, um, they, Japan is just being more obvious and more blatant. When I was out there, I went to, I visited Rapunzel, Tokyo. That looks like a um, Times Square 40 second street on steroids. All right. You don't see no Japanese culture over there. That not whatsoever. The only thing you see is the um, writing of it, but everything else is very um, Westernized over there. You don't see none of the Japanese people, even little um, in their um, traditional garbs, garments. Even when you look at even in our neighborhood, the gentrification. You never see a Japanese neighborhood. Um, in a black neighborhood, never. You see the Chinese or anything else, but you've never seen the Japanese. When white folks start coming in, that's when even the um, hibachi spots, the um, Japanese restaurants start um, coming up. So you are dead spot on. It's just a matter of time before they um, make somebody who they really want to be like um, be the face of their code. All right? Also, but now my question is... White, White folks, folks um, have a long history of turning people against us, all right? right? They have a long history. My, My question, question to you is, all right, now, now that, that the Japanese, Japanese show and um, show their anti-black racism, because they are very anti-black, what, um, when do you think they will eventually break their tool, and then what will be next? for the Japanese people. The time to break the Japanese tool is within the next hundred years. You're going to have to because yeah. either they're, they're going to be useful to you or China's going to overtake them. China's been very, very clear that they intend to go on the march and they're already encroaching on everybody around. They're throwing sharp elbows and everybody around. India, Taiwan, they've been very, very clear that they've got ambitions. So if you're going to make that move to culturally dominate Japan, you pretty much come up on your last 20 years. Because if you don't, if you don't tighten that grip on them, China's going to make that move. That's what's going to happen there. Now, you say you served in the, you served in the Marines in Japan? Yeah, well, um, I was stationed in uh, 29 Palms, uh, California, of 2012. I'm April 2015, that's when I got out. All right, I started my service September 2011 because I had to go through the training and everything like that. Yeah, from September of, um, no, October 2011 to April, I was on a six-month deployment with the Marine Corps. So we went over there, and with that clown, he didn't um, also break that. He's trying to name all the other countries 
I need, I need to, to ask, ask this question, question then why is there, there more American bases in Japan than in anywhere uh, other um, Asian, Asian countries? countries. Japan, Japan is full of American, American um, bases over there. Full. Okay, well, so, that, that might be, that might that might be a bit of a different issue there. there. Thank, Thank you very much for giving this call. That might be a little bit of a different issue. Okay, let me get back over here. I think we got ours back on the line here. So, so um, you're, you're, why don't you go ahead and explain to all of us about why the rampant blackface black images in Japanese media and cinema, the, why that, that's not, in, that, that, that doesn't prove, prove they have an anti-black culture. Mm, that's, that's a specific industry that's, uh, that's pushed out by, corp- by uh, what is it, uh, white colonial corporate people? Those, those, are, those are not white people. people. Uh, Akira, Akira. Katsuhiro Otomo is not white. Katsuhiro Otomo is not white, sir. Who do you think is defining that thing? Sir, who wrote the book? Who wrote the story? Sir, who wrote the story of Akira, a white man or a Japanese man named Katsuhiro Otomo? Who did it? Finance. 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 Keyword, Keyword I said. Finance. Okay, sir. No. No, 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 sir. It doesn't matter who financed it, sir. Who wrote the story? Who wrote the story? Who financed it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, ever since 1990, I've been here. I've seen these situations come up because what was happening back in the day, back in the 90s and everything, was that R&B, what's that, guy? Guy, R and B, Bobby Brown, New Jack Swing and everything. That was pretty much taking over everything. Now what was now when I was working at the radio station and in a Sir, why do these Japanese people write stories about black folk looking like minstrels? Why do they do that? Because they're because they're told to the same way that the same way that the signs are like blonde and blue eyes and you got Sailor Moon. It all happened at the same time, right around nineteen ninety. So, so you're, you're saying, saying that they're doing the, that's, that's not their culture, culture that all, all these folk are just doing it no, because, because they, they were told to. You're, you're saying all these folk are doing it yeah, because they were told to. Yeah, exactly. Ever since, ever since, ever since MacArthur, MacArthur took over Japan, Japan everything is dictated to us. Especially when the CIA set up the LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party, everything is dictated. All these advertising agencies, these are samurai families, that is, that's a, especially like this whole situation with Johnny, it, it is what it is. Now, if you want to get back, now, if you want to get back to the Miss Universe situation, I can do that. No, no, sir, I want to stick on that. Ready? I want to stick, no, sir, I want to okay, stick on that part about their culture. You said that you're saying that Katsuhiro Otomo wrote a whole story there. And shows, shows us his minstrels, mm-hmm. but his, his inspiration, inspiration for doing yeah. so, he didn't write that story himself. White, White folk told him to write that story. Yeah. yeah. They're the ones who they're basically been controlling okay. everything. Like Sir, where, 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 is, where is your proof that Captain Hero Tomo was not inspired to do that depiction of us himself? Where's your proof? Well, okay, wait a minute. Now, where is your proof for your opinions up to now? Because I've, I have no I've got proof. Sir, I have, uh, sir, I have proof. Sir, I have proof. You, there, you can go online and look up. Sir, I have proof. The, inter- the interviews with the Captain Hero Tomo, he talks about his experiences in that were inspired him to write a cure. At no point does he say a white person told him to do anything. Mm, okay, cool. So, so you, you need, need to prove, prove that this white person that you say you told him to do that did that. Because, because I can well, show you on, now, when it, comes to, white now white sir, white when it comes to rap music, okay, look, I can I show you the white men who did that. Sir, it's my program. I'm explaining your I'm answering your question. I can show you the white men who tell the black folk to write the songs that they write. I can show them to you. I can show you Leor Cohen. I can show you them doing that. You can't show me the white man who told these folks to do that. You, you can't, can't show me a white, white man who told okay, Captain Hero Tomo write a story I'm depicting black people. Okay. Give, give me an example, example of it. Give me an example of it. Give me an example of a, give an example of a Japanese author, author who said, I, I, I did it this way because white folk told me to. Like they're gonna like they're gonna really like they're gonna say it. Okay, so you're just I making, so you're just making it up. So you're this is this is basically a different version of why not say so. 
Okay. All right. Sir, so we, 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 we ask you for evidence to back up your claim. We ask you for evidence to back up your claim. What you're saying is I'm going to make a claim, but I'm going to give you no evidence. What? So evidence or it didn't happen. Okay. Let's see, let's see yours. Sir, you're the one who claimed the white folk made his story for him. Where is your evidence the white folk wrote that story? Exactly, because I think exactly because they they finance everything. You know that as well as about it. Sir, he he wrote the story. No, sir, he wrote the story that they financed. So we're talking about who wrote the story. Who wrote the story that they financed? Who wrote the story that they financed? They wrote the story. When you're paid to do it, you know how you know how advertising and stories go. People get people get paid. You write it. It's like who's that? Who, whoever whoever sponsoring it, they dictate what's going on. They say, okay, put this in there. Add this symbolism in there. Okay, okay, so, so do this. Sir, oh, maybe you should have to go through the corporate ride. No, no, sir, because, because Akira, Akira, like most Japanese stuff, is, was a manga. This, these things were published independently in Japan. In Japan. So, who was the audience that they were? And it was so, about who was the audience? Who was the audience that they were trying to put those anti black images out to? And it was about the anti black images out to. And it was about what? It was about total nuclear Japan. They, they said, said okay, okay, this is, we've, we've already been through a nuclear, nuclear bomb. bomb. Now, now this, this, is, this, this has been, been my experience. I grew up in post-war Japan that's been bombed. This is, and they projected that in the future. Okay, okay that, that has nothing to do with black people because, because we have nothing to do with before nor after, after the bomb. So, so to, to insert, insert black people in such a disrespectful exactly way where we, we don't belong, somebody went out of their way to do that. And Katsuhiro Tomo wrote that story the way he wanted to. And who was the audience that they were trying to put that imagery out to when it was only being distributed in Japan? Okay. okay. Uh, anyway, what, who was the who was the audience he was who was the audience they were aimed at at when the publication of that comic book was only being given distributed in Japan, sir? Okay. Go ahead. That comic book was only distributed in the early days. That comic book was only distributed in Japan, sir. Audience, and then they pushed it to international. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. it's got to take, take off in Japan first. But it's, but it's got to take off in Japan what? first. It's got to take off in Japan first. If it's not viable in Japan, then it doesn't get an international release. That's the way it works. Now you know, 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 now you Akira was not propaganda. It was a very successful comic book. Everything in the media is propaganda. Sir, Akira was not propaganda. Sir, Akira was not propaganda. Akira was not propaganda. Akira was a very popular comic book series. Anyway, can we get back to the universe of Japan? Akira was not propaganda. Akira was a very popular comic book series. It, very, very popular, popular in okay. Japan. I, I, okay. It was it very popular in okay. Japan you, first, you, you which gave us viability internationally. You don't live in Japan. Okay, you don't live in Japan. You've never been here. You don't speak the language. Now that this Elijah, this, this Elijah idiot, he, I can tell right now he's not. He's never been a Marine. Sir, what you basically done is you basically confirmed what I said before I put you back on the phone was that when I do show any controversial evidence, what he's going to say is it's not Japanese society, it's just those people over there. You're wrong. You know you're wrong. Okay, okay, sir, you're, you're doing wrong, exactly you're, you're doing, doing exactly what I said you do. That when you're shown incontrovertible proof that this is the culture, you're, you're gonna say, say no, it's not. It's, it's, just, it's just those you're people you're over there. I just, I literally just gave, I literally just gave it to you, and you did exactly what I said you were gonna do. You said it's just those people over there. No, you didn't. It's just what you basically did was filibuster the whole damn thing for the false narrative. Then you got, then you got a bunch of group thing and said, okay, whoa, here, let me make it look like an idiot. I'm like. So I'm, not making, I'm not making you're you look like an idiot. idiot. I'm, I'm repeating your words, and your words are making you look like one. I'm not. I'm not what what words? Words? You've been, no, you haven't been repeating my words. You've been blocking me every five seconds and not letting me make a point at all. Sir, I'm repeating your words that you said the white corporations told Texas okay, well, to write what right. they did. Yeah, sure, right. I, 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 I took your technique, TBA. Okay? Oh, the white you said the white corporations. You didn't name the corporations either, by the way. So if you know so much about it, you should be able to name who it was. No, no, I didn't. Okay, who was? Wait, name them. 
but I know who owns them. No, no name, name them. Name, name what? Name, name the white, white corporations that told Katsuhiro Tomo, Tomo to, to make that story. Okay, okay. we still get we still get on we still get on this because it's just yeah, yeah, history. Sir, third time. Name, name the white, white corporations, corporations that told Katsuhiro Tomo, Tomo to write that the way we did. Okay. You're, right. the, you're the, the one who suggested that they, they were there. there. Tell, Tell me who they were. No, no I didn't suggest, suggest them. I'm just doing that what they did. Who? Name, name them. That's a few. Sir, sixth time. Name them. Yeah. Name okay. them. I cannot, I cannot name them right now. now. Okay. okay. Do, do us all a favor. favor. Call, Call us back, back when you have the chance, chance to research them and, and get, get their, their names. names. Yeah. Then, then we'll have, have a, something, something we can actually discuss. discuss. Mm, yeah, 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 all right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Wait, nice, nice technique. technique. All right. There are white, white corporations, corporations and they made him write, write that, that way. way. They, they did, did it. it. Who's, Who's they? they? Them, over, over there. there. But, but it's not the society. Folks, what, what did, did I say he was going to say when he called back? I told you what he was going to say. Oh, it's, it's not, not the whole society. society. It's, it's just those, just that group over there. there. It's, it's just him. Just that one. Well, well it's, it's just, just that group over there. there. But, but that doesn't, doesn't represent, represent the whole society. society. It's just them. Well, well see, it's, it's mind control. control. Well, the, the, the corporations told, told him to do it. it. The corporations wrote the story? Well, they, they, they told, told him, him to write, write like that. So, did, did I call it or did I call it? it? Jason, Jason, let him talk. talk. Okay, if I let him talk, this is what he's going to say. say. How, How do you know? know? Okay, get, get back, back on the line. line. Okay. okay. Who, Who did, did it? Just those folks over there. That's not representing the whole thing. Just them over there. See? See? What are their names? I don't know. See? Jason, Jason, let them talk. talk. Let them talk. talk. See? Call America 773. You're on live. The Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? This is Long. Calling from Chicago. Long, Long Chicago. Chicago. What's on your mind? So, so that, that last, last caller, uh, I mean, from, from his just emotional, emotional temperament, we already know what the deal is with him. But I wanted to go in a little bit about the Japanese. Like you said, it's a cultural thing. They have a history of it. You see how they treated the, the Ainu people. And, um, you know, even with the Chinese in World War II, they are uh, colonizers. And all of the media glorifies whiteness. Like all of the heroes and all of the, like, the, the beauties. The white, blonde, blue hair, big boobs, all that crazy stuff. And they also structure the history of their country and their outlook on society through their animes and shows. And the same thing that the white supremacists say, and, you know, go through in their media and shows, is very similar to how the Japanese writes you know, their own. So I just wanted to add that in, and I'm going to end my plan. Thank, Thank you for everybody who's called tonight. Like, like I say, I mean, you know, you know definitely, definitely there's one thing, it's, and there's one thing to do with somebody who did something to you. you. We're, we're not, not even, we weren't even standing on the damn soil. We, we aren't, aren't even, we're, we're not, not even a significant, significant portion of the population. population. They, they were going, going on. on. This is like, like oh, but by, by the way, there's these folk we've never met before. We, the white folk don't like them. We don't like them either. We're at the bottom of the barrel. Remember, by the time you get into the 60s, the whole planet knows about our struggle for civil rights. And yet, and yet over, over in Japan, Japan what, what were they, they doing where we were concerned? The, the whole world, world knew about our struggle for civil rights by the time we get to the 1960s. 1950s, 1960s, 1960s, definitely the 1970s, but what, what was Japan? How was Japan depicting us through the 60s and the 70s and the 80s? Well, well I'm not going to no wonder. wonder. Some, Some of these white supremacists feel so, so comfortable. comfortable. 
Call me Rico 415. You're on live. Black Channel. What's your name? Where you call from? Uh, this is Denise in San Francisco. Hi, Denise in San Francisco. What's on your mind? I'm here in San Francisco. This is a very birthday. And I, I know there is a lot of racism coming from Japanese people. Okay? And I think you're right about uh, watching our culture. Because not only was rock and roll and jazz used to be considered nigger music, but ribs too. I remember the first time that restaurant did steak and ribs opened up. I thought my father was going away. He was just totally going away because ribs used to be considered nigger food. Now, like I said, they tried to totally take over the ribs movement. If you don't, don't stand, stand, stand your ground, ground you'll, you'll get run over. over. Thank, Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get Call Me Rico 206. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hi, good evening. This is Agnes calling from Seattle, Washington. How are you this evening? Agnes from Seattle. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, very good point about the Japanese culture being in here um, and black race. Um, I lived in Japan for about six years, and I will just tell you straight out of the gate, the anti-black um, racism, nobody no, taught the Japanese that. That's an endemic part of the culture. They just don't want American folks knowing about that because you have a lot of, of course, military personnel, but more so corporate business people who do live over there. Also, where I live in Seattle, um, you do have a, a large group of uh, Americans and Japanese heritage who are racist as F. Okay. Most of the white Asians, either they were uh, intermarried with whites, raised by whites, or just assimilated in the white culture, spew anti-black invectives. No different from Japanese. It's just um, a black skin is considered um, dirty and evil, and the same thing translated over when the Japanese assimilated into American culture. You have to keep in mind. For centuries, Japan was a closed society, and that clown who was in the Marines in Japan right now will accept the fact that for hundreds and hundreds of years, because Japan was a closed society, they had uh, ideas that still remain entrenched and reinforced to this day. So he got colonized by the Japanese colonizers. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. I appreciate that. Look, look, here's the issue here. Japan has a lot of redeeming characteristics about it. Japanese society has a lot of admirable traits in it. They actually have some admirable things in it. There, there's no denying that. At the same time, we do not allow the fact that there are some very admirable traits in there to get us to start saying, by the way, there, there's not these huge negative traits that are in there. That these negative artifacts, you start telling yourself, well, as long as I'm getting the benefits of the positives or whatever, well, we can excuse these negatives. Actually, no. Actually, no. See, that's how you make a better Japan. You make a better Japan by acknowledging that there's some there is positive, yes, but we've also identified some negatives here that are very acidic and very destructive. Some things are protective. Our issue isn't about the protective. It's different from the part where they say this is reserved to be specifically Japanese. We wouldn't have an issue if that's what was going on. But that's not what's happening. They're not just stopping at this is reserved for Japanese, they move on to, and by the way, hey, take a look and let's mock these Negroes. Whoa, wait a minute. Now that's not protecting yourself. That's mistreating other people. And there's nothing about protecting yourself that requires the mistreatment of other people. Now there's a flaw. Call me Rico two eight one. You're on live at Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Prince out of Richmond, Texas. Prince out of Richmond, what's your name? Okay, brother. Uh, the Japanese, I would, I would say that they would even consider themselves Aryan. Remember, they were connected with the Nazi, so they had no problem with Hitler and his regime. 
they would surrender. They said all types of things to get them to surrender. They wouldn't do because they didn't want to change the way they had the, the system that they had. And this goes all the way up to 2000 when those Pokemon cards, I can't say Pokemon cards came out. They had a character called JYNX, Blackface character, and so they start showing up everywhere. This is not white people telling them to do this. This was a, a character that was very famous, a big anti mama, uh, uh, look like a, a black dude, big fat black dude, one of the right around me. Matter of fact, when they did that down here in Houston, they started getting the Mexican book with their black face in it from Mexico. So they, they always had these reinforcements, right? So they've always done it. And Jason, you were saying, I hope they're going to, they may make come out with a rap video. Ben Shapiro has. He got with this other guy, and they come out with a rap video a couple of days ago. And he's a hip hop pet all on his face, white guy with brains and talking nothing but anti black racism. And they got 5.8 million views. Ben Shapiro, he rapping in the video to with, with that little, you know, the thing that the small ass with. Yeah, yeah you, 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 you let, let them go, go on long enough there, they start showing what that is. On, on the screen, screen, by the way, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, for those, those of you who are looking at your screens right now, I actually went, went to go Google, Google that to look up Jinx. It, it looks, looks like Jinx has undergone, undergone a bit of an evolution. They so banned it. Well, well, there's yeah, a Jinx with black skin, but then there's a Jinx with purple. So, and I saw somebody leave a comment and they like, I saw a comment from somebody saying that when I was a kid, Jinx was black and then later it's purple. So, I'm, I'm wondering if this is a change that was made. But, uh, they say they banned it. They changed it. Wow. Okay. Well, no, like, like I said, I, mean, like, I think it's, it's in, in Nintendo, they have pulled back on it. Like I said, there's a bunch of articles about it, and I don't want to get too far off the woods. I just want folks to see what you're referring to. Because when you first Google it, it's showing this character with a looking real crazy with purple skin, though. But then you see this black one. Then you see this black one. Then you see this black one. Okay, look at that. It's like a genie. Yeah, they have like a genie of it. I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay I, guess I guess I'm seeing the anime, because I'm going through the images here, and you're seeing the anime, I'm like, okay, well, this, this looks, looks kind of interesting. This looks, looks kind of interesting. It was a gene. Okay. This, this, this looks, looks kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah, because the, the, the female, female in it, I guess it's trying to give it blonde hair, or just to throw us off the center, whatever. I'm like, for that genie, I'm like, oh, wait a minute now. Now we're getting off into Moore's territory. Now we're getting off into Moore's territory. When you do that. I'm about, I'm about to say, say we, we see him like that, that like, oh, okay, we're okay, starting to look real Moorish over, over here right now. <laughs> starting to look real Moorish. Like, okay, okay that, that makes sense. sense. I'll, I'll have the last word. word. Yeah, 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 Jason, so, so this, this is, is a common thing. thing. When, when these guys, guys start laying between the legs of non-black women, women, not all of the, not even most of the black guys go see, but some of them, they get to identify with whoever they lay their man between them. So, so that, this, this is how they, they become, uh, they, have they have to justify their lifestyle. That's why he went so quick to you calling him a coon. You never called him anything out of his name. And he was so insecure about who he is. And so just just keep on spreading the word, brother. That's all. You're doing it good. Thank you. Well, brother, you know, like I say, guilty dogs bark. The real guilty dogs scream. Thank you very much for this call tonight. Yeah, yeah, like I, I said, said, I mean, it's real interesting there. there. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Z. Yeah, a lot of I mean, you kids, you kids watch, watch that. that. You better be you aware of what they're watching. watching. You better be aware of some of these things they're being implicated with. with. Call Mary Go 410. You're on live. Black, Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Donkey from Baltimore. Okay. What was the name again? Donkey. Okay. Donkey from Baltimore. What's on your mind? Yeah, yeah, I want, I want you, to you to explain to the people how you're a hitman who travels across the country and you were featured on the first episode of Traffic on who? who? Can you explain that? I saw the Tahoe, I saw the Kit Kat, I saw the, the, the bitch ass way, the demeanor, I saw the face. Explain to the people who you are. And, I know who you are. and what are you going to do about it? Now, now that you said all that, okay, okay. Now, now what are you going to do about it? Any 
anytime, any place, anywhere you want to have a discussion about that, pull up. But by the way, okay, what you going to do about it? I'll still, still be here, here next week. week. Same, same black, black time, same, same black, black channel. channel. All, All that, that really tells you is I mean, mean what the hell I say. Call from area code 516. 516. You're on live. Black, black channel, what's, what's your name? Where you calling from? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was cracking up from last dude. That dude was fucked up. That's from New Queens, New York. All right, but I was on your mind. All right, so <clears throat> this is, uh, it's, it's crazy, crazy because, because you think, think about, about their history, history right? right now, now Japan, Japan they got bombed to smithereens by I think, I think maybe that's, that's part, part of why they their hate for bad I don't know I like you, you search for the answers. answers maybe, maybe they, they feel, feel like that, that there was, was such because there was a lot of black soldiers during World War II when we stomped these grounds when we went into this country so could that possibly be part of some lingering hate there even, Even though, though it, it shouldn't, shouldn't be because, because you know, we're predominantly, predominantly not. We don't represent the American military predominantly. Well, well no, no, brother. I mean, what, what it is, 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 I mean, it's very easy to recognize here. If, if you see somebody else is clearly outclassed from you, clearly superior, superior what, what can you do to establish to them that you're on their side, side and, and you are not a threat? threat. What, what do you, you do? do? Well, obviously, obviously you're cozy, cozy up, to up to their cultures, cultures and their ways as much as you can. And anybody they don't like, you show them that you don't like them, them, them twice, twice as much. You've, You've confirmed two things. things. Number one, you're with them. And number two, you're, you're riding, riding for what they, they want harder than they are. Of course, now, now the dogs, dogs are off your back. back. Clarence Thomas, we can go down the list. Thomas Sowell, we can go down the list. I mean, this is this is a pathology that you see in many places. Many places. So, so it's like, like yeah, yeah, they dropped the bombs. Okay, okay. How, how do you convince, convince them that there's, there's no need to do something, something like that again? Let's, Let's go, go attack, attack somebody who's completely, completely powerless. So, so not, not only, only do you not have to worry about the guys who are more powerful than you beating up on you again, you don't have to worry about the folks you're beating up on swinging back. At least that's what you tell yourself. But well, I mean, you're all the way there, so it's not like they can do anything to you for it. So it's really symbolic, but we're taking it beyond. It's like, eh, this is not symbolic. Because what you've done has actually become very popular. And now it's worked in conjunction with these other things. So you take something that's otherwise very valuable, very beautiful, manga and anime and whatnot, and now it's been weaponized. And Jewish people learn the hard way the perils of ignoring that type of weaponization. Of, of ideas, ideas. That, that type, type of weaponization, weaponization of the media, that, that type, type of weaponization, weaponization of communicating your image. image. They, they learn the hard way what happens when you ignore that. Thank, Thank you very much for giving this call. I'm going to get called to 412. You're on live at Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Good evening, Jason. My name is Robert. I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The statement that you just made is true. You could yell at at work. You go home and smack the wife and kick the dog. There, you know, the guy who was um, talking about he lives in Japan, he sounds like he has relationships with Japanese women. There's a good book that's correlated with your assertions. It's called um, The Cultural Band. I don't know whether you're familiar with that or not. You are correct in your observations. The number one rule of dealing with the devil is don't. The person who was defending Asian hate towards black people is obviously not aware of Peter Lyne or the young black girl that was shot to the head by the store owner, and then that store owner was exonerated. And Asians, for most part, form pale bold from with Europeans because their hate for black people unites them. It is traitorous for even these young Japanese people to put their hatred toward black people, and we never drop the bomb on them. They forgot, they forgot about, about that. that. So, so Jason, Jason, I'm, I'm glad, glad that, that you stood up strong against obvious negative assaults against you. And, and keep, keep up, up the good work, work and I will continue, continue to be a listener of yours. 
Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get a caller from area code 872. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is Chris from Chicago. Chris from Chicago. What's on your mind? Hey, so, um, uh, Chicago, Chicago known for this, uh, dance, dance called, uh, football, man, um, and, like, the past 10 years, I've been seeing, you know, videos of, uh, Japanese still in our dance, and, you know, football dance, and saying, you know, like, you know, they, they better and all that, and, um, just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, hoping, you know, that will be in a, in a, um, Olympics, uh, soon one day, like, like, the break dancing, you know, <laughs> It depends if it becomes popular enough and big enough and significant enough. Yeah, it will. Oh, okay, man. And nothing, um, uh, they got, um, um, you know, Godzilla came out, um, uh, December, uh, last, you know, last year, December 1st, last year, right? You know, they renewed, you know, the, from 1954. Yeah, Godzilla minus one. Godzilla, the film is called Godzilla Minus One. Yeah, and they, they were doing new actors. But check this out. Um, like, this Friday, it came out with a, with a black and white one. So, you know, it's the same movie, but I guess, yeah, black and white. You know, and, and, it's, and it's, it's crazy. And, and another thing, um, you know, I ain't no squirrel or nothing. You know, black girls uh, first, though, but... Don't, don't, don't white girls look, 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 white look, 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 white better than all these girls. <laughs> well, here's my thing. Here's, here's my thing about that. that. Um, certainly, um, you know where I'm going to stand, where I'm going to fall on this, but you can uh, to each his own in that regard. Here's my thing about it here. My issue is not so much who folks lay up with or whatever. You know, I've told you all here for years. I, you know, folks are going to do things whether they're wise or unwise. They can sleep with whoever they want to in that regard. My issue is. What, 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 what you, you do, do with her is between you and her. her. But, but what, what you do out here on the streets is between you and me. And, and if, if sleeping with her has you coming out denying racism, sleeping with her has you coming out denying white supremacy, denying Asian mirroring white supremacy, if that's what sleeping with her is doing to you, then we got a, you, you got a problem, especially if you're in our proximity. Thank, Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get you a call on Mario 267. You're on live at Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, this is Dennis from Philly. Dennis from Philadelphia. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. B1. So I have a couple quick points, and I'll try to run through this because I can. There's a lot going on. One the one of the callers mentioned Jinx, Pokemon. That actually comes from what's called Gang Udo. Gang U-R-O. It's a Japanese term, it's a black basically black face if you look at it. And um, years ago I had seen a documentary, two documentaries, well there's small videos that really talked about one was um, racism akin to like they would actually do Hitler reenactments in Japan and another one was Harajuku fashion, really stemming from that gang with a black face. Uh, racism. Another one was World War II, black men in Japan, and sort of like soft showing and talking about black men and this interesting dynamic in, in relation to World War II. They didn't mention the Black Panther, Japanese, uh, Japanese Black Panther person, which is interesting enough. Um, uh, last point I mentioned, though, um, you know, we, uh, there's this really great part about Japanese culture. Someone who's been there, I visited for uh, a few weeks. You know, and a lot of what I've realized, a lot of my friends who live there, folks who visited, folks who, whether they're stationed there or just, you know, spent years teaching English over there, I like that crazy caller a few calls back. A lot of times what people tend to do is they, they position themselves in, in thinking about racism in Japan doesn't exist. It's all just, they have problems with what's called gaijin or foreigners. And that's how they, a lot of black men over there who live there and do their thing, they perceive their racism as just this sort of national identity. It's really just against foreigners or gaijin. They're not racist, they just don't like foreigners or gaijin. You're just gaijin as a black American. You know, it's not racism, but no, we've seen actual examples of racism in their culture. Uh, someone mentioned anime. Like, like I mentioned, the gang Udo, like Piccolo, Mr. Popo, they use these euphemisms for black characters. They'll use like 
different colored characters like Piccolo or you know things of that nature. So there's a lot of races and there's hidden layers, but some people tend to get caught up in the beauty of Japanese culture and they miss it. Last well, one, not mention, uh, yeah, I disagree with that one, but go ahead. Okay. Okay, okay Um Last, last time I mentioned mean, Yayoi Kosama, the, 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 uh, the famous artist. Um, she had recently caught, um, caught fire for her racist comments that she made about us being hypersexualized and things of that nature. She had to recently walk back her statements. But it just speaks to a woman of her age, of that culture, having sort of racial sort of undertones. But okay, I'll let, let, me, me, let me address that real quick here. So. The, the land, land of hentai, hentai trying, trying to tell, tell anyone that they're hypersexualized. Hmm. Well, well that's, that's kind of rich. rich. By, By the way. So the land of hentai, hentai was a hentai and sentai, I think it is. For, for them, them to try to, to tell anybody anything about, about being hypersexualized, hypersexualized where, where manga and anime routinely to the, the point, point that I find it disturbing. disturbing. I actually have not been watching a bunch of anime unless it's been, you know, it's going to only be certain ones that have been clear or certain subject matter. You, you can't go, go off into anime, anime just well, with, with my sensibilities. sensibilities. You can't go off into anime just willy-nilly willy because anime, anime manga and anime, but anime in particular, routinely depicts teenage and in some cases adolescent girls. Engaged in sexual behavior with men who are not teenagers or adolescents. Furthermore, I don't see adolescents with adolescents or teenagers with teenagers, but certainly adolescents or teenagers with folks who with men who are clearly not. She's worried about the wrong damn thing. If she's got an issue about oversexualization, hey baby, you're looking at the wrong damn people once again. Why don't you turn around and swing on them men behind you? That's, That's what, what you need to be doing. doing. We, we got, got nothing to do with that right there. there. You, you, you got, got a whole different, different issue you need to be looking at here because, because there's, there's not a single, single black man on this planet who is setting, setting the Japanese, Japanese child out. Not, not a single one. There's not a single black man on this planet who is sexualizing a Japanese child. Not a single one of us who is over-sexualizing them. Hell, sexualizing them, much less over-sexualizing That ain't us. So what, so what I'm, I'm saying, saying is this type of projection, projection where you ain't got, got no venom for the people doing something, something to you. Folks who got, got nothing, nothing to do with you, all of you spit it up. That's cowardice. You don't, you don't have, have the guts, guts or the courage to deal with the folks who really harm you. you. So, so you're, you're going, going in on somebody you don't even know. Somebody you don't even know. know. Now I want to go back to the other thing you said in the society. When you say they fellas spend time there and whatnot, and then they just say, oh, well, that's the culture, and it's just because you're foreigners, just because you got gene. Um, there's a problem with that. There's a logical fallacy in there. First of all, these images from Mr. Popo and whatnot, that's, that's not something that came from Japan. You didn't pick this up in Japan. There's, if you take a look at classical Japanese artwork, there's, There's nothing, nothing that, that does this. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them all. I've seen, I've seen the pictures of the devils and the demons and the gods and the, the shoguns. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, There's nothing that it looks like this. This, this doesn't yeah. show up in Japanese media until the 1960s, of the 1970s or so. It doesn't show up until then. So, so you, you can't, can't say that you, you go back, back all this way. We can't even put this back to Walt Disney and cartoony. cartoony. It doesn't show up then. It doesn't show up with the, 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 I forget the name of the rocket boy. I forget who it was. I forget the, the name of that is. Astro boy. Astro, yeah, Astro. Astro. I, you don't, you don't yeah. see it back then. You don't see it then. It's only later that it shows up. And I'm like, okay, there it is. So, so you, you can't, can't say that you drew this as inspiration from your culture. culture. Ooh, well, Jason, what you getting at? Just like, like Nazi Germany, who are you imitating? And, and why did you gravitate to this? this? Of all the things that you went coming through, why did you gravitate to this? Because this, this ain't a part, part of yours, and there's only one group of people you could have come across who showed you this. And that, that, that imagery comes with an attitude. attitude. 
Now, what, what is, is it about, about the attitude, attitude of this imagery that you gravitate to? You can't, you can't blame, blame this on other people. people. You, you have, have a taste, taste for this. this. For, for this, this in particular. Somebody, somebody show me the anime, anime Speedy Gonzales. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going, going there, but there'll be some logical, logical leaps here, by the way. And, and if you guys are watching, you're watching of those white animators, animators white culture, by the way, where's, where's the anime Speedy Gonzales? I know that you didn't, didn't do that. that. There's, There's not, not an anime in the pew. You're not, You're not touching, touching those European, European cultures. You're, You're only throwing them at us. You're, You're only mm-hmm. seeking to Can imitate negative things towards us. us. So, so when you say to these guys, oh, they, they've, they've been, been hanging, hanging around so long. long. Number, number one, one, it's like, okay, okay first of all, the point of origin of these images here doesn't all that. But number two, brother, come on, let's keep the stack. Nobody's ignorant about this. They're, They're doing, doing that because, because they, they want, want to rationalize to themselves what allows them to continue getting the reward that they're getting. And what, what is, is the reward that you get for ignoring white supremacy? Well, there's one reward that tends to stick out to a certain population. Interracial sexual access. Mm-hmm. And And they're they're off on the other other side side of the world. world. They're They're not being judged by black black society at large. Nobody Nobody knows who they they are. They're They're not not going to be held accountable for what they do. So So as far as as they're concerned, we'll live the white season, we'll get away with it. And then when we start start questioning, questioning, it's like, like, it puts the light on them. They start feeling guilty. And then they want to argue, well, it's not really like that. Because then you don't have to actually admit to yourself what you're actually doing. Hey, I'm, I'm submitting, submitting myself to her and this racist culture. culture. I'm, I'm submitting, submitting myself to that. And that's, and that's a hard thing for a man, man to do. It, it makes, makes it hard for you to engage in sexual activity when you're having to admit that you're the one who's submitting. That you can sleep with her so long as you accept your dog status. You can have all the Japanese women you want so long as you accept that you're a dog. Mm-hmm. If, if I could, I could ask, ask one question, question if I may. Go on. Um, um, I, I wondered, wondered about, about um, you brought up some really, really great points, points but, but I wondered, wondered about, about the trilateral commission's involvement in the sort of characterization of this culture. Um, you know, there's so many different examples we can talk about, but I, I also noticed there's a clear distinction of how Black Black Americans Americans are depicted depicted versus versus Africans Africans and things of that nature. So I I think there's a very more nuanced conversation in how identity is reflected, but it's all still under those racial undertones. Do you think that there's this, uh, that trying to have permission or anything like that? Has this any direct involvement or or, or no? No. This This is is the the culture, dude. dude. You take take a look look at Tokyo Tokyo Pop. Pop. You know, you you take take a look at, um, uh, well, I'm going to mess this up. Jaijutsu and Jaijutsu. What are the, 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 the two magazines? magazines. Y'all know the, 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 the two magazines that everybody tries to get into so they can get, get off the ground. The ground. Um, mm-hmm. I forget the name. There's, there's Tokyo Pop, and then there's, there's the other one. I forget what it is. It's, 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 it's the magazine that all the manga people want to get their stuff in because you're trying to get your career off. Oh, Shonen Jump. Shonen Jump. There you go. Shonen Jump. I was saying Jujutsu kind of like I know that's just a show. That's not the actual, that's not the magazine I'm thinking about. But, uh, right. yeah. Shonen Jump. Um, so, what I'm saying is, brother, that, 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 that's not the Trilateral Commission. That's not the Council on Foreign Relations. That's not the UN Human Rights Council. That's, hey, who wants to, who wants to get on? That's who wants to get on. What I'm saying is, that doesn't work unless you have a taste for it. That's, that's the that's the thing I'm a signal to the grassroots. And as you know, it sounds like a pretty well versed on this. As you know, with things like Shonen Jump, Jump that ain't all, all Japanese people mean. Mm-hmm. So now, now we're talking about like culture because it's Shonen Jump and Tokyo Pop, and whatever. And that, for those of you who are not manga people or whatever, a lot of what we're saying here is going to be deep off the woods. But these are publications for people in the manga industry. Manga is Japanese comic books. Folks in the comic book who want to get a Japanese, Japanese comic book off the ground or whatever, or they, they're, they're trying, trying to break into the industry and make a name for themselves. These, These are publications where you, that's, you, that's the ground floor. This is you trying to get started, started in the industry. But, but here's, here's the, the thing. thing. Those, Those are, are really... Now, now yes, yes, 
I'm not, not going to be disingenuous and say that we don't have access to Shonen Jump, Jump over here because, because we do. do. But in all honesty, these are publications that are directed towards the Japanese direct market. They're not, not really, that's, that's not really an international thing. thing. Mm. It's, it's really directed toward the Japanese direct, direct market. market. And, and if it takes off in Japan, then we start, start talking about international distribution because that costs a lot more and there's rights that are involved. <laughs> and, and then if you're really lucky, lucky later. Yeah, well, yeah, well, and if, if you're, you're really lucky, lucky then we, we can start, start talking about anime. anime. Which, which is where the big, big money is involved, and lots, lots of connections have to be made, especially mm-hmm. in Japan, it's like, like, like the damn mafia. There's, there's no thing, because anime is like the damn mafia over there. So, so it, it's, it's a closed system, system in that, in that regard. regard. You're saying it's just, just, just because you got a good idea, idea doesn't mean you're going to get an anime. Everybody wants an anime, but good luck getting one. So, that's why most of the anime we see and stuff is from stuff that's like 10 years old. Unless it's from a creator who's making a really good name for himself, in which case everybody wants to grab his stuff, he was crap. But, but when we're when talking about Shonen, Shonen Jump, Jump and things like that, that uh, that's, that's really directed, directed towards, towards the Japanese, Japanese market. market. That's, that's the way it has. If, if it's, it's not, not hit in Japan, Japan they ain't going to bring it over here. here. If, if it doesn't hit over there, there they're, they're not going to bring it. If, if it doesn't, doesn't hit over there, there it is unlikely that you will see it over here. So if you see it over here, that's not even the time because it's already been a hit over there. And, and if it was a hit, hit over, over there, there now we're going to bring it over here, and that's where it circulates. So, so this idea that it just goes global all at once, that's, that's, not, that's, that's not, not the way that works. I'm bringing all that up to say, okay, okay well, well, then, then that, that means the only people who are consuming Mr. Mr. Pogo, or Pogo, or whatever, Mr. Pogo, Pogo and picking all the rest of them, the only people consuming that are Japanese people to start. They're the ones who said, thumbs up, cosign. Check, Check mark. mark. This, this is hot. They're the ones who have to sign off on that. And, and then you, you get it. it. And what I'm, I'm saying is that you have a culture where this is where the proving ground for it. With, with no, no external, external input, input or, or interference. interference. So, so it was hot, hot over there. there. If you, you see it over here, here that's because it was hot over there. there. Why in the world mm-hmm. that, that type of imagery of us be hot over there? there. There's, There's nobody, nobody who's looking at that and thinking it's anything other than it is. They think that's, that's funny. funny. And, and what, what I'm saying is that this type of degradation, I want you all to understand something else, this type of degradation here, so, so you basically got, got a black male image, but he is depicted, depicted as this weird creature, comic, comic relief. In other words, to, to lower his status, to lower his stature, or should I say to lower his desirability and then Mm -hmm. you sit up here and have a joker Joker from akira Akira, clown face face. another black black male there there. i'm like by the way these are not very redeeming characteristics why because you said that you're portraying this monsters monsters, criminals these are negative negative depictions depictions specifically of of the the males which, Which brings, brings me to my last, last thing. Right now, which, well, this brings me to my last thing, thing, and then I'll let you finish, finish here. here. This, this brings me to my last thing. thing. Mm-hmm. I started asking myself a question. By the way, I've never seen any depictions of black women in anime, mm-hmm. specific black women in anime, and never seen it before. Certainly not coming from them. And then I got to thinking, actually, the only time I ever saw it was after Samurai. And there's only one female who's in there, just I think the chick was rolling the dice in the second one. I got, I got to think, about the way, I don't think I've ever seen a black woman, a black female, in anime before Afro Samurai, Samurai Resurrection. Resurrection. I think in the first one, Afro, Afro Samurai Resurrection. Afro Samurai is in there, he doesn't even have a mother. They show Afro Samurai's father. They don't, they show Afro Samurai's father, they show him, but they don't even have Afro Samurai's mother in that thing. And you, you don't even see a female as a side character until you get the second one. So what I'm saying is that what that says to me is, oh, you all have a particular focus on males. And, and you had a particular, particular focus on how you shape the image of the males. Because I, I gotta tell, tell you, by depicting this black image like this, well, well this, this sure would go a long way towards discouraging young girls. Why? Because they're gonna see this as children. So, so you introduce this black image to the, girl, what, the Japanese girls as children. I'm, I'm sure this will have no effect on their image of us when they get older. Will it? Mm-hmm. 
You're right. right. How was your last word? Thank, Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I see, see now in anime, anime black, black women are more caricaturish. It's, it's more about the image, image of look at this black girl and her hair. hair. It's, it's more about that. But you see, like, I've, a couple of folks disagree with me in the chat, but there's a lot of, you know, stand in symbolisms for black masculinity and the fear or the threat of black masculinity. Unfortunately, I have seen it in hentai. I've also seen it in, in DBZ. You can see it in Attack on Titan. The, all the Titans are black people. Let's get into it later. But yeah, they use these stand-ins for the fear or the threat of black masculinity and black male sexuality. You know, Dr. Franklin Clark Wilson talked about that extensively. So, you know, okay, well, really with that question about that. Okay. okay. All, all the Titans are black people. Huh? Um, explain, explain what you mean. Before I make my comments on that, Explain, Explain what you mean by that. Well, there's this strong undertone of, uh, of uh, the sort of Nazi regime, right, that's sort of injected into the show. And the antithesis is this looming threat of this darker, more monstrous figure. And it's, it's, it's more so just, you know, representing this threat of this fear of this figure or, or the dominance, really. So that's, so that's really sort of my own theory in terms of like how they injected this, this show, you know, how they sort of presented this show. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with that one because I didn't see any black people in Attack on Titan until they got uh, to the infiltrators of the defectors from the Marley show. For those who have never seen whatnot, this is a whole lot of things. things. The, 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 the defectors from the Marley show, they had the one guy from somewhere else. else. Now, now there is a black connection, however. There actually is. You all, you all might, might not, not know, but if, if you, you take, take a, a look at, at the continent, continent so, so there's, there's Paradia, Paradisa, Paradisa, where the, all the Titans, Titans, or at least the descendants, went, went off to when the King of Titans, Titans left the mainland, mainland. And, then and then there's, there's Marley. Marley. If, if you, you take, take a look at it, there's one episode, you can actually take a look at the Google Images, I guess, or whatever. If you take a look at it on the map, it's actually Madagascar. They have, have it's a, a map, map of Africa, Africa upside down. down. So, so when you take a look at Attack on Titan, if you want to know where Paradisa is, is in reality, if you take a look at that map, I'm not, not making this up. up. If you take a look at the map, map you can actually see it's, it's a map, map of Africa, Africa and, and the island they went off to is Madagascar. Now, actually, there's another universe that actually does not have Africa Madagascar. However, it's very clear that the guy who wrote Attack on Titan, and that's where he got that from. This is Africa, this is, Africa. Um, this this is, is Madagascar, Madagascar out here, so a real world, world thing of it. So some people say that's an Easter egg, but uh, if you want to see a, a yeah, real world real connection to it, 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 I'm sorry, not to interject, but, but what, what gets people lost is that they don't visually present as black, so people get lost when they look for black skin. They use they use these sort of proxies for blackness, the strong presenting posturing, you know, you know domineering, domineering sort of figure. figure. They, they use those as the proxies. They, they won't actually present black skin in every anime, anime so it confuses a lot of viewers. But I'll just end there. Thank, Thank you very much for getting this call here tonight. Like I said, as far as I'm being black, black people, it's going to be a little bit more for me to get that out of, even, even, even for it being, uh, you know, vicariously. It's going to be a, gonna be a little bit of a ways to get it. Go there a little bit. Certainly, Certainly, I think, I think it's, it's worth you all investigating in that regard. Let me get you call on here. Go three one zero. You're on live at the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Call here. Go three one zero. Last try. You're on live. Okay. Call here. Go three one zero. Conducted. Call here. Go seven eight six. You're on live at the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, yeah, my name is Tom. I'm from Miami. Okay, okay what's your name? Chamo. Okay, Chamo from, from Miami. What's, what's on your mind? mind? I was thinking about living to the beginning of, of the of the podcast of the show. I was thinking about the what it is to for a country to get to get white. And I was thinking about my own country. I'm from from Venezuela. And there was definitely a, a process of whitening that by, by, by studying the, the history and being, and being conscious of it, you, you can see um, 
I grew, I grew up in, in, I was a kid in the 80s, I was born in 81, and by that time, the, the country had become an, an apartheid, even though that word was never mentioned. But, uh, but uh, I could tell because there was uh, an 80% of poverty, that, and then there was like a 20, 20% of uh, middle class, and that, the, that, that 20%, they were they were white, and then and 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 then the eighty percent was the the darker darker skin, and so there was a there was like a, a colorism system, and then then I saw recently I saw a video of the thirties where it was colorized, and I I could see that everybody was. A dark, uh, dark skin color, and so you see, if you think like, okay, what happened between the 30s and the 80s? Well, in the 50s, uh, we had a dictator that he brought in millions of Europeans to the country. So by the time, and in those, in those, um, those are like Europeans actually like ended up making a, a lot of money in companies, and they, and they, a lot of them became rich. So. I like, I like to, to compare, compare the, the story of the North and and the story of the South. The South. Sometimes, Sometimes by studying the the, the, the the history of the, of the North, North, I can understand. It helps it me understand, understand, understand the things that happened in, in the South or by vice versa. versa. And and, and it, it, it was the same thing, thing. You know, you know Europeans coming to to the land and and getting getting you know help and and improving and improving the race. And I thought, this is crazy, I found a document that was, a document that was made at the time of that transition, and it, it, it's like a, it's an official document where they talk about, they actually use the, the term colonization, and they, they, they use the, the phrase of improvement of the race. Like, it's crazy. And then by the age when I'm growing up, I'm hearing the same, same terms. It's always the same thing. All of those people are lazy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All, you know what I mean? Like all, all the, same, the same thing. And, and, and it was really weird because, because they, like the, 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 the disconnection. Oh, and also the thing. Like it, it makes it, the, the, that 20%. Like they were at the USA before their own country. There was a vibe of, of like, you know, if, if something was Venezuela, it was... It would, it would be never, never as good as the USA. USA. And, and there was, was a lot of repping of Europe also, because by that time we had the grandkids of those Europeans that had come to the country. country. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I could never like connect with, 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 with those people because it, 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 was, it, it was very, like, a, very plastic, you know? Well, well definitely, like I said, there's, there's a, a lot you all can, can learn, learn by studying the history of these things and seeing how they worked out and how it came to be, because none of it is accidental. If someone goes to that kind of effort to transform a region, they're doing it for a reason. And it may not be in your best interest either, by the way. Just because you're not one of the dark skin folk doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be in your best interest, because typically what happens is they end up setting up an oligarchy. So the first step is to bring in a bunch of these other folks here, and the next thing you know, they got an oligarchy, and you're like, well, I'm not one of the dark-skinned folk, but amazingly enough, you found yourself at the bottom of that oligarchy. Now, right, right. yes, yeah. because it, it being, be, be, uh, you belong to a quote-unquote social class, you can belong there, but it doesn't even mean that you have the money to, to, to do so. Like, I mean, uh, we live in an apartment, you know, like, if you were poor, you lived in the slum. If you were middle class, you lived in an apartment, and if you were quote unquote rich or high class, you lived in a house. It was straight up like that. But okay, you could you could be in an apartment, but in in, in, in my case, for us to be in an apartment, we had to be like my mom, her two brothers, my grandma. You know what I mean? But so it's, it's all like it's, 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 and it's all like it's all in the. In, in, the, in, in the brain. brain. What, what erupted in specifically in Venezuela is oh, another thing. thing. Like, like uh, people, people outside of Venezuela, Venezuela at that time, they, they would think of Venezuela, Venezuela uh, uh, I, mean, I mean by the 80s, 80s and 90s, they thought of Venezuela as a white country. 
there was absolutely no representation of Aro, the, uh, the, the descendant of Venezuela, or not even like brown. Bra it was all like white and blonde. You know, the, 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 the white is better. What interrupted that specifically for Venezuela was the, the, the Chavez uh, revolution. And, and I'm not like pro promoting like any political side, but, but uh, as far as, you know, like changing the, 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 the mindset of the Venezuela, because you know what happens is when you have uh, an interruption like a, like a revolution, uh, the first ones who leave are those, uh, those Europeans. The grandkids of the Italians went to Italy. Italy. The grandkids of the, uh, the people from Spain went to Spain, and, 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 then, a, and then a bunch of came here. That's not the way of the new Venezuelans to have a That's a very good point to make. That is a very good point to make. It's a different way. When things jump off. Yeah. The, the, the newcomers and whatnot, the thing, the folks don't have deep roots. When things jump off, they're the first like, oh, let me hop back over to Spain for a minute until y'all get that worked out. Let me hop back over here to Italy for a minute until y'all get that settled out. So that's actually a very interesting point to make. Yeah, when it's time to stand on it, these other folks show you real quick. It's like, oh, no, 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 we're here to benefit from it. We ain't really here to suffer with it. That's not what we're trying to do. So, yeah, that's what I mean by you. Once they get that established, don't be surprised if even if you're not one of the dark skinned folk, you find yourself at the bottom. Because you're, you're like, like, by the way, way I ain't got, got the option of getting up and leaving when things get rough. He says, I gotta sit here. And they're, they're like, like, okay, we'll, we'll be back, back when, they, when the shooting shoot stops. stops. Yeah, because yeah. uh, you know, uh, 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 there was a set of policies that made the country get really, really bad. And it was, you know, it was Bush and all those people like, like, like Bush father. And, 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 you know, whoever was, was running things in, in the 80s and by the, by the late 80s, like the IMF, like all, all these things were like put in place in the country. And it was really, I mean, there's a reason why, because a, a Chavez is like one of those revolutions that happened by both, not by Biden. He tried to do a coup at first and he fell. So this is a revolution that happened through the both. So there's a, my, my point is that there's a reason why he got the vote, because it was the, the you know, these people were really, people were really hurting. And like you said, it, 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 grabs, it grabs everybody. I agree. Well, thank you very much for giving us a call tonight, brother. We appreciate that. Venezuela checking in with us here. Like, like I say, they have to do that, and they're not afraid of being unpopular in the family. You know, everybody knows what the real deal is because it's too recent. It's not like they can go back, you know, two hundred years. They gotta go really dig it. Like, oh no, 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 no. They know actually within their lifetimes, within your father's or at least your grandmother's lifetime, they've seen how this has happened. They've seen how it's gone down. Let me get Call America three hundred one. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Nathan from Portland, Louisiana. Okay, if you got your phone, speaker, or Bluetooth, you need to go ahead and hurry and take it off there. We can barely hear what you're saying. Yeah, my bad. I'm uh, AD from Portland, Louisiana. All right, AD from Portland, Louisiana. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of bring it back to the original subject matter in a way, but more so with just in America. So we know, um, you know, after the Korean War, and, you know, World War II, Japan and uh, South Korea, essentially they were like destitute. So how is it that by, let's say, the early 90s, the mid 80s, all of a sudden you're starting to see their economy just boom out of nowhere? Oh, no, we no, even no. Tired of that they're essentially just... No, no, no sir, it wasn't the 80s. In reality, reality they, they were turned, turned around within 10 years. They, they were, were turned, turned around, around within 10, ten oh, yes, yes, sir, absolutely. absolutely. They, they were, were turned, turned around within 10 years. years. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. In, in Germany, you saw the same thing as well. You saw the same thing happen in Germany. Germany. They, they called it the, the, the miracle, miracle there, too, too as, as a matter of fact. fact. Let me ask you, let me tell you something right, right now. now. For, For example, example, brother, the, the first, uh, the first uh, bullet train was in Japan in 1964. 1964, we were, we were over here fighting, fighting for our damn human rights, rights in America. America. And they, they at, at the same, same time we were trying to get our human rights, rights. they had, had their first bullet train in Japan. Japan. 1964, right. not 1984, 
1964. We still don't have a proper bullet train in America yet. There's a bright line, I guess. We don't have certain that on par with Japan's got now. 1964, they had that. So in reality, no, very shortly after the war, they had things sussed out in that regard. So I know now, by, by the time you get to the 80s, it's going to hyperdrive by the time you get there. But remember, they were not being hampered. They were not being, there was nobody over there hampering them, uh, throwing obstacles in their way. There was no red line or whatever. Nobody was sitting up here interfering with them like they were with us. So, so they, they were, were allowed, allowed, allowed to, to get, get their act together, together in that regard. regard. Oh, oh, yeah, and, and to draw off all the resources, resources because the white, the white folk wanted to get them industrialized because they knew as soon as you get them up to that, that it's very unlikely you have to go back to war against them again, and, and they were right. right. So, so they, they had, had a lot of help getting where they are. So this idea that the war was over and the white folks just left except for military ships in the harbor and that was it and the Japanese just figured out that's a lie. They went all over the world, they went to Europe, they went to America, they got the knowledge and came back to Japan and built a modern society. They didn't figure out how to build one. They came and saw how to build one and then brought it over there. Right. So they're kind of, uh, I guess, add a little bit of part two. Um, because, because, you know, I'm 24, 24 so, you know, in school, school we never really, never really, they, they kind of gave us the kind of, uh, the okey doke about, you know, oh, well, these people, people they just work hard and blah, 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 blah. And seeing, you know, how, how they act, act over here, I know that that's, that's, that's really not the case. case. But, but besides, because when I learned particularly about the Korean War, War um, what's his name? I, I, I learned that it was kind of more of a strategic sort of way to kind of like, you know, pump money to a lot of these Eastern and Asian countries because, and essentially, that you can be a buffer against China and Russia and not part of the Pacific, so you can negotiate all these different trades or whatever. But what sort of other investment would you think that they would have, especially like, you know, of them importing a lot of them over here in America and a lot of them sort of having a monopoly over a lot of black businesses in our community? You're saying what's the reason for doing it? No, but um, I'm just saying, like, why specifically then? Um, particularly, particularly like, like in the late 60s, early 70s, 70s, you're starting to see like, you know, a lot of these people. Oh, because, 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 you know, because you had an excuse for doing business so. loans and other kind of stuff. No, no it, it was politically expedient. You had a reason for doing so. Stuff. Remember, you're going to have to get this through with legislation. So you're already dealing in that part of the world. You already got things going on. So it's a whole lot easier to just concentrate your bandwidth towards that, that. And, and you got, got all, all the reason and rationale that you need to. to. All right, right. Things, things are not going well in uh, Southern Asia. Asia, things, things are, are not going, going well in Vietnam. Um, so, so what are you going to do with all these refugees who are running around while you're losing ground there? So, so in order to save face and everything else and serve a dual structure, they brought a bunch of them over here. I'm from Louisiana, a bunch of Vietnamese people in New Orleans. Their rationale was, well, they were Farm, they were uh, fishermen over there. there. New Orleans has a, a Southern Louisiana has a robust fishing industry. So they, so they dropped them on top of us. So it served a dual purpose. Remember, as Brother Lee Fuller taught us, white supremacy always takes both sides in argument. So on the one side, you're taking folk from over there and you're bringing them over here. So that's, that's a strategy that they've been using for a while. These people were convenient and you were already spending money and allocating budget toward dealing with their part of the world. The, all, all you have, have to do now, now since they're, they're already on the agenda, agenda it's, it's a whole lot easier, easier to co-opt them, them for that agenda. agenda. Please, Please remember, remember, you know, you know for, for example, example I mean, it, 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 for those of you who don't know about, about the borders and whatnot, whatnot, you know, there, there are a bunch of you who are old enough, enough is, and it wasn't that long ago, like you could go from New York to Canada without a passport. You need one now, but you didn't up until recently, you didn't actually need one. And by the way, it wasn't that long ago, it was the same thing with Mexico. You didn't have to have a passport to go down there. You do now. So getting from those places and whatnot, there wasn't really this huge influx of people trying to do that in that regard. It's only when we start changing things that that starts to happen. So Mexico's gone through a lot of issues and difficulties and whatnot, and that's created some of this. But also because you got businesses up there to kick that in hyperdrive. They, they, didn't, they didn't have, have the ability, ability to bring in a large workforce of poor Asian people to work on farms, to work in the agricultural industry. Furthermore, most of them didn't have experience in that regard. In Mexico, you have folks who have more experience of that. 
So, so there's, there's a, a method, method to the madness. madness. They, they don't choose people for just nothing. nothing. They're bringing they're Indians, Indians over here because they're experiencing the computer program. program. But, that but that was something they had over there. there. The Vietnamese because of fishing and anti-communism. And a lot of ours. Those folks are very, very early. And the ones they bring over here, you correct that. The ones they bring over here are very early anti-communists. By the way, now, now that you, you mentioned that, that, you know, there's a parallel between Louisiana and um, Florida. Florida. Take, Take a look, they allowed all those Cubans, Cubans to come over here from Florida. JFK, mm -hmm. okay. because Castro was already on the political agenda. So, so making those changes, changes is a lot easier for politicians, politicians because no, we're, we're already discussing Cuba, Cuba now. now. They're already on the agenda, agenda. they're already coming in there, blah, 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 So like I said, there's a lot less distance. To be used to, to go and say, okay, well, why don't we let some of them come over here? here. So, so then, then comes your wet foot dry foot policy, which sounds exactly like what you later see with Vietnam. So, so they, they dump a bunch of Cubans in Florida. Florida. Oh, oh, what do you know? They're early anti communist. Anti -communist. And, and what, what do you, you know? They've also got an anti black, black sentiment, too. Ooh, there's, there's a bonus. bonus. Well, we've got these Vietnamese people who are early anti communist. And, and have an anti-black sentiment. Ooh, there's, there's a bonus. And, and now from Mexico, Mexico uh, you start to see, starting to pick up what we're putting down. down. There, nobody's, nobody's brought over here by accident. accident. They're not allowed by large numbers by accident. accident. Just like, like the previous caller was saying, they're doing them in this way. way. By the way, yeah, yeah there we go. go. There we go. When you all start thinking this over, you start getting lines of connections. It's like, ooh, this looks familiar. This, this sounds very familiar, familiar and, and take, take a look at the effects of it. Take a look at the effects. So, so basically, um, I know you said that maybe about two, two broadcasts, broadcasts ago, I think, or maybe the third ago, but, but you, you mentioned, mentioned about sort of, um, you, you know, know um, you know, a lot of the Asian communities, a lot of the Hispanic communities, especially, particularly on the West Coast, are starting to be gentrified. And, you know, you're kind of starting to see, um, so, 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 so it's kind of performative extremism from like Trump and other people that sent us about immigration and deportation, but we're not really seeing a lot of money being invested into, into hiring the prosecutors and to actually build the facilities to be able to actually execute that. So do you think that there's people on that side of the political spectrum are just trying to like rework it to where it's like digestible to the base, or are they actually trying to build it onto something more than that? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, they, they have, have plans, plans for that. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to give a very succinct answer to it. It's not by accident. You're not seeing it formed by accident. It's very deliberate. Yes, it serves. It doesn't, it doesn't, just, serve purpose, it doesn't just serve one purpose, though. That's what I was saying before. It doesn't just serve one purpose. It serves dual purposes. If you're only going to get one thing done, eh, that gives you a really limited bang for your buck. So if you're going to do things that could fundamentally transform society, um, yeah, you're going you're to need to make sure you get that together. You're going to need to make sure you get that together, but you're going to get the maximum bang for your buck, which means, okay, does this do more than one thing? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, appreciate you can get some of this dual purpose, now you've got really maximum bang for your buck. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me give you a call to 843. You're on live with Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Phil from the Buford platform. All right, Phil from Buford. Phil from Buford. That's not, not a good, good sign, sign right, right there. there. Phil, what, what are you calling in for? Yeah, yeah um, you, you, you know, know Melanie Griffith, Griffith, her mother was Tiffany Hendrick, right? right? Yeah. Phil, and she, Phil, she, well, why are you calling in? I'm talking about Asian. Asian. Okay. I'm, 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 going, I'm talking about what we're talking about. Okay, did not tell you to find a different program, different program to call, sir. 90 seconds. Okay. Let's try, this. Let's try this again, sir. Did I, did I not tell you to find a different program call, sir? Until you get somebody who can vouch for your decolonization. All right. Folks, when I tell you do not call back in, I mean do not call. Back, back in. in. No, I mean you. 60 seconds. If I give enough time, Jason, Jason might forget. forget. No, he will not forget. No, no I assure you, he won't. No, you are not. not. No, no, we're not. not. 
Speaking of keeping people out, I'm talking about Japanese or Japan. Good enough time to talk about keeping people out. It's a good opportunity to do that. Is there a coalition? Indeed, there is. I'm just giving you all some background on the origins of it. I'm giving you some background on the origins of it. Why is they all look so frighteningly familiar? I got a string of phone calls up here right now, so we're going to have to go ahead and revisit this at a later date. A lot of folks are interested in this, but I got a, I got a dozen more phone calls sitting up here in the queue right now, and blog talk is getting ready to shut down. But a lot of folks are interested in that, so we'll, 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 we'll revisit this again. I assure you, we'll revisit this again and discuss some of the anime angle of it and stuff like that. We'll revisit this again because right now there's a big push to specifically increase the Asian population, and it's ominous because they're choosing specifically for anti-black sentiment. There's the ominous part. Keep your eyes and ears open. We will be discussing this again. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. If you are new here to the Black Channel, welcome to the AVM Intelligent Black Thought. We do this every weekend. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time we're here. If you haven't been to our website, blackchannelfilms.com, you want to go and check out our groundbreaking, best-selling documentary work, 7 a.m., Gentrified, Race War, all available on DVD and streaming. Go to blackchannelfilms.com. That is blackchannelfilms.com. I want, I want to thank, thank everyone who has contributed to tonight's program on PayPal or Venmo. Thank you very much for your support here. Uh, the Shea Otis and everyone else, thank you very much. We appreciate that. I want to thank all of you for tuning in here live and recorded. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, The Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, black is the future. And the future is uncompromising.